Hey guys, this tutorial is on fiber mesh. I see a lot of people who are iffy about it. They like it, it's cool, it's a really awesome thing, but it's like, okay, well I can't use it for anything. This tutorial is going to clear that up. It's actually phenomenal for creating long hair, especially for females. And I'm going to show you how you can bring that into Maya as curves and create a hair system that will kind of fill in the gaps. And we can get some really realistic looking hair by using fiber mesh. I'm going to explain why it really is the best for long hair. It might not be the best for fur. You know, x is pretty good for fur and short hair. And um, you can use just Maya fur for that. But for long hair, I really, really want to uh, stress how amazing fiber mesh is for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a scalp. If we go to the poly frame, I, we want to create some groups because typically we could just mask where we want the hair to go, right? And I, I bet you some people do it like this. They just mask or they might do sections at a time. They might do just maybe just her side, uh, create a fiber mesh from that, and then so on and so on, do each piece. But what you can do is you can select your select lasso, command shift and go to select lasso. I'm just going to create a little scalp, kind of like that. Cool. And then I'm going to group visible. Let's make sure we're on our polyframe so we can see this. Okay, cool. So, what I have here is I already have some sections coming out right now. What we want to do is we want to create polygroups on this scalp for each little section that we want control of. In fiber mesh, when you create fiber mesh on a mask, if there are polygroups within that mask, the fiber mesh will take on those polygroups. So, I'll explain that as I go. So, I'm going to turn off symmetry. I guess it was already off. I'm going to turn it off so I can get right in the middle here. I'll probably do it a little bit neater. Come on. So we'll go a little bit neater here. Best I can. Cool. Groove visible. Alright, now I'm going to go and select this part right here. Groove visible. And so now we already have some sections here. I missed a part right here. And you can always just select this. Oops. And then go that. Oh, come on. And then invert your selection. And you can just set up your polygroups this way. So I have a couple polygroups here. I'll do one more just to show the idea. So let's do one right here. I just kind of um, held Alt with com Command Shift. And that would just get rid of it. And so I'll group this visible. I'll make this one Command Shift Alt. Just get rid of it. Group visible. Command shift alt. Get rid of that. I'll group visible. And so now you can see we have these different sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each one of these scalp pieces by just selecting one. If it'll let me. There we go. Invert it by just dragging on the background. And then now I'll hold command shift and select all the other pieces. It's kind of hard for me because I have all these other polygroups, which I probably shouldn't have had. But it'll work. Just select all the pieces. Sometimes it'll do that. I don't know why it does that. There you go. It's still doing it. Okay, three times in a row. Just let's try it one more time. There we go. Don't know why it does that. Command Shift. Do it again. One more. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to inverse this. And here we go. You have your little scalp with polygroups. I'm going to press Command and Command click on the background, and that will invert your mask. And so now this whole scalp is masked. And if I press Command, Shift, and click on the background, that will bring back all my other pieces. So now basically I have a, a scalp that is masked with polygroups. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go to Masking, and I'm going to Shrink the Mask. Basically, it's kind of like shrinking in. And the reason why we want to do this is because before I did that, it's still kind of leaking into these other polygroups. And we don't want these polygroups. So from experience, I've just learned that you need to shrink the mask, maybe one more time, and then just sharpen it. Okay? And so now you'll have a nice crisp line only in those polygroups. So now we can just get straight to it. Let's go to Fiber Mesh. And then we'll just do Preview. Let's actually go to Lightbox Fibers instead, and let's just click, I like to use this one and this one. I'm going to start with the Fibers 142. Cool. And so you should get something like this. Depending on your scale, it, it will give you something. So the first thing I really like to do is go into the modifiers, 
and just change gravity to negative 1. Out of your face, there we go. So there's a lot of settings here, and I would really go take a tutorial that teaches you all of this, but I'm just going to show you the stuff I use. I'm just going to show you what I use to make it look good, and I'm also going to explain what do you have to do in here to make fiber mesh actually work better. And there's probably something in here that you didn't know about, and there's also one setting that I really want to teach you to change that will help you in sculpting your fiber mesh. That a lot of people don't know that they have to change this, uh, this setting. And so they have this idea like, oh, well, fiber mesh isn't that good. Well, it's because you haven't changed the settings. So the first thing I'm going to really do is I'm just going to take this texture off. I don't really think we really need it. And so we can just move this over here. Or I guess it's just going to take in the color. Um, and so I like to t change all these variations. It's a variation um, value. I like to turn them uh, down. I turn them to zero. That's what I always do. Um, and so that will give me something nice and straight, nice and clean. Your coverage is, it, sometimes it, it, it depends. Like, it will fill up your your fibers. It's not your density, but it's kind of like a width value. It's kind of like, it's not a width value, but what it does is depending on your density, it will kind of fill up everything. You see how the width is changing now? You can see how the fibers are changing. So I usually just keep this low because hair is thin. You see how the width's getting thinner. So there we go. I'll make this pretty thin. Now, since we are planning on bringing this into Maya, you want to turn this Mac Fibers down. This is not for ZBrush. We're not trying to get a pretty render in ZBrush. We just want curves. So I really want you to think of this as curves, just like curves in Maya. So let's turn this down a little bit. Um, that should be good enough, okay? All right. And so there's some other values here. The length value you'll need to play with. But for what we're doing for just curves, I think that's really all you really need to know. I mean, there's a lot of other values in here that will help you making it look good in the BPR, but we're not really worried about that. We're just trying to get this into Maya. So I'm going to make her hair a little bit longer. We can always change that, actually. And here's the big setting. I'm about to tell you the big, big setting that people miss. It's the segments. And this is why ZBrush is so much better than Shave and Haircut, than X-Gen, than um, Maya Fur. For first off, all those different ways of doing hair, you have to brush on the, the model, meaning you have to click on the model to change the direction of the hair. That gets on my last nerves because sometimes hair is coming out in the, um, on the background. It's not even near the model, and you want to give it nice curves. Well, how do I do that? I have to click on the model. Well, that's why I love ZBrush for doing this because you can sculpt your hair. That's what this is. That's what fiber mesh is. It's just polygons. You can sculpt your hair, convert it into curves, and that is just so much more powerful than having to depend on clicking on your model and it's just taking your stroke of direction. No, you're actually sculpting the hair exactly how you want it. So for female long hair, I'll usually make this like 20, 20, 25. And I would really look at these as like CVs. If you know what CVs on a curve are, we're just adding CVs right here. And this will transfer when we export the curves. But for the most part, I'm going to show you how you can rebuild your curve in Maya. Okay, so that's how you set that up. We're all good. We got everything ready. Just press accept. It's going to ask you, do you want fast preview? Yes, do fast preview. Because right now, we're not in fast preview. It looks very thin. It's, it's not going to really slow you down or anything, but I always sculpt my hair in Fast Preview. It's just so much easier to sculpt. So, it should disappear because I have my stuff in Solo. Um, but we're going to go, um, let me hide all my other sub tools. And then, there we go. So, this is what you should have. Notice how the hair, the, the fiber mesh, took from the poly groups. And you might be asking, okay, well, what's that for? Basically, we can we can go to our hair right now. Let me put that out there. We can select these and work with them individually. And so this is super powerful. Not only that, so let me just show you a good example. I usually just select one. And now let me show you guys. I have a little um, hair brushing palette. I've made a tutorial on how to create your own windows, so check that out. But here's my little hair brushing palette. palette. I... 
do not use the groom brushes. And I think that's the major reason why people are like, oh, fiber mesh is cool, but it's just not that easy. It's because you're probably trying to manipulate it with these groom brushes. And I, I never do that. I literally only use groom hair toss and groom lengthen. I might use groom, I think there's a long one. I don't think I have it in here, but there's a long groom long. I use that one sometimes, but for the most part, I just use groom hair toss. And I'll explain why. So let me turn off dynamic. And so I usually just select one of my groups and just get go at it with um, groom hair toss. I'll just put it where I kind of want it real quick. Just It's hard. You see, it's not, it's not going to listen very well. So I'll just kind of get it the best I can with that. Okay, still not really good. So I'll just kind of brush it like that. That's good enough. I do all my sculpting for hair with move. That's it. And like I'm, that's what I'm really trying to stress to you is that fiber mesh is just geometry. Sculpt it. And the cool thing is that it's connected to your um, your scalp, so your root will never really move. It's stuck there. So I smooth it. I smooth it like any other piece of geometry, and I'll sculpt it. I'll straight up just get in here and start moving this where I need it to go because it doesn't matter. We're going to turn turn them turn them into curves, and we're just going to rebuild the curves. So it doesn't really matter if you stretch them or not. And you're not you're really not because we we added segments, so you have plenty of segments here. So I'm just going to kind of give her something real quick. And see, this is you cannot do this in X-Gen. You cannot come in here, smooth, give it some curves like this. This is just so powerful to give it exactly those beautiful curves that females have. And of course, you'll have some strands. There's some cleanup you need to do in Maya. But for the most part, it's it's pretty good. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. And so that's why I've made this video is because I see so many people who are like, well, yeah, fiber mesh is cool, but you can't really use it. You can use it. And it's pretty amazing, especially if you're using it for female hair, because I don't, I don't know any other kind of software plugin that can do what ZBrush is doing right now, basically sculpting your hair. Um, so there we go. Very quickly, like literally in two minutes, a minute, I have a nice little portion. This hair is kind of miss, messing up right here, and this will happen. You need to just come in, move it, and then you can smooth it a little bit. It, it's it's going to be some messy hairs in, in a couple places. Like you see some shorter hairs here. That happens. So I, I am telling you, there is a little bit of a cleanup process, but for the most part, it's beautiful hair. Absolutely gorgeous hair. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to go here and sculpt every single one of these, of course. I've already done so. Um, so let me just turn this off. And then there we go. So I've already kind of gone through and done my hairs. You can see how they're, um, they're all separate. So I did them separately. And so that is the process. You go through one by one, shaping each hair until you get something that looks really, you know, nice with a bunch of curves like this curve right here i couldn't have done this in next gen i couldn't have done that in my fur there's no way like it just there's no way and that's what i'm saying zbrush gives us so much more potential for hair um shave and haircut is the same way you um you don't have enough segments i i have not figured out in shave and haircut how to add more and more segments to your to your brush curves so that's another problem with that so that's why zbrush is so amazing it's the segments and the the fact that you can sculpt your hair. Okay, so the next part of this video is really going to be about exporting it. Um, so we'll just export this one. I'll show you how to export this one. We won't even do what I had there. So let's turn off everything. And we'll just export this. This is all we need. So once you're done and you have everything and you're ready, just go down to Fiber Mesh. If we can find it, there we go. And you'll see export quirks. I want to just export this. If you look up here, we have like 300,000. Um, this is not the poly, this is the poly count. So this has nothing to do with how many curves you have. If I press export curves right now, it will tell me. It should tell me. There you go, 7,000. We don't want 7,000 curves. We don't need that much. And you might not understand why, but it's because Maya has something called hair systems. You can create a hair system that will fill in the gaps. So basically, we just want to go to your preview settings right here and just turn this down, a lot down, as much as you really can and not lose any forms. Cool. So this is much better. We have a little bit less, and now let's go to export curves. 
Ah. I didn't say anything that time. Okay. Well, it must be low enough that it's not worried about asking me. So when you come to export it, always export as a Maya file. It will not work if you export it as OBJ. I'll repeat, it will not work if you export it as an OBJ. So export it as an MA, it will work. So let's just call this um, hair tight test. All right. Cool. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and we'll go into Maya, and I'm going to show you how you can light, import these curves, and I'll teach you a little bit about hair systems. So you, you can do some more research in your own time, but I'll give you the gist of it. Anyways, thanks, guys.